we have vitamin D. So we can get it with food. The problem with food, and if you don't eat a lot of fatty fish, and most people don't, you can get it from sardines. It's probably one of the richest sources as far as fish is concerned. You can get it from mackerel. You can get it from salmon. But we're talking about very low, very little quantities for most of these fish. One of the best dietary sources to get your vitamin D is liver. But as long as the liver comes from a healthy animal, because a lot of your animals, like your feedlot animals, are mass, you know, mass production farms. They're fed heavy quantities of grain. These animals are obese. And a lot of times the vitamin D in and of itself is lower in ob with obesity. So we don't want to eat liver of unhealthy animals. And then one of the other good sources is egg yolk. And so I know you've probably all been told throw away the yolk, it's got high cholesterol. That's mythical, don't worry about that part. Um, if you want to learn more about cholesterol, you can go back and look at Dr. Osborne, uh, the Pick Dr. Osborne Brain Archives. And I've done a number of videos on cholesterol for you to get that information. But these are some of your food sources. Now, food is great and you should eat to try to position yourself for good levels. But nothing beats sun exposure when it comes to vitamin D. It's very important that you understand this because one of the big myths that's out there about sun exposure is that if you get too much sun that you're going to end up with cancer. And it's very important that you understand this concept. Sunlight does not cause skin cancer or any cancer for that matter. Um, sun burning does. So let me give you an analogy. That would be saying to avoid the sun because it can contribute to skin cancer is a lot like saying avoid drinking a glass of water because you might drown in it when you're drinking it. Remember, it's about quantity. If your vitamin D levels or if your sun exposure level is enough that you get massively burned and blistered, yes, you're going to increase your risk for cancer. But if you're getting regular exposure to sun under what's called the minimal erythemal dose, meaning you're getting enough to not burn, but you're getting enough that your skin turns slightly pink. That is where you're making lots of vitamin D. As a matter of fact, one good exposure in the sun can generate 20,000 IUs of vitamin D. One solid sun exposure, 20,000 units of vitamin D. So any of those of you who are taking supplements, you know, some supplements come in 2,000, unit pills or 2,000 unit doses, some in 5,000 unit doses. So just a nice day of sun exposure without burning can get you up to 20,000 units of vitamin D. Sun exposure is very, very important and to understand that burning is what you want to try to avoid, but good common sense applies. So depending on your skin tone and depending on your skin type and also depending on your diet, because one of the problems that happens, people getting sun exposure that are predisposed to burning is their diet is so poor High, high carbohydrate, highly processed foods, lots of sugar, very low plant-based products. Remember, a lot of your plant chemicals, like the, the, the components in blueberries and cherries, the proanthrocyanidins, these are the chemicals that give the plant its pigmented color, but also allow it to sustain high temperatures and sitting out in the sun without shriveling up, right? Those same chemicals in the plants, when you eat them, allow you to get a sunscreen effect so that when you're out in the sun you actually are being protected from photo radiation and being protected from actually burning your skin so it's important that your diet is dialed in when you're getting sun exposure because your diet is the best form of sunscreen now on that note let's talk about this most of you have probably been told at some point in time from a dermatologist to avoid sunshine okay and if you do go get sunshine you're being told to SPF up. Let me spell that right. SPF. SPF stands for Sun Protection Factor. And most sunscreens nowadays are anywhere from, you know, 20 plus SPF, and most of them are 50 plus. Um, and so what happens, it's, you know, so when you look on your sunscreen label, it'll tell you, you know, however many SPFs it's rated for or graded for. A lot of them are 20, 50, sometimes even higher. Most of you women pay attention to this because if you're wearing cosmetics, if you're wearing makeup, most of your SPFs are going to be somewhere in that 20 plus range. So I want you to understand this. SPF 8 blocks 95% of your skin's ability to make vitamin D. 
95% just in SPF 8 alone. So that's a very low level, right? If we're talking about going up to SPF 15 or higher, we're talking about blocking 99% of your capacity, of your skin's capacity to make vitamin D. Why is that so important to know? Because many of you get sun exposure. Many of you women get sun exposure. Maybe you go to work, you're out at lunch, and you're taking a walk to get some sun, but you wear makeup, and your makeup is SPF 30. Guess what? You're out of business. You're not making vitamin D through the skin on your face. And if you're wearing long sleeves, you're only going to make a little bit. Part of how we make it is, is through sun exposure on the skin, right? And that the more skin exposed that we have, the more potential to make vitamin D. But if you're also wearing creams and lotions on your arms, those many of those also have SPF higher than 15. So you're out in the sun, you're getting the sun, but you're not producing vitamin D as a result of that sun exposure. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.